Hey everyone, Selena for Who is Jesus Today. And I'm going to open up a few things here. Maybe a few can of worms. Uh, I don't know. I like to keep down the stress level though. Uh, you know, I, I've been one that tried to, um, to minimize my stress uh, levels, I would say, for most of my adult life. Because it's just a healthier lifestyle. I mean, you don't have to be um, a med student or a physician not to be aware how stress brings on other physical conditions. So when our minds are bombarded and stressed out. And that's why if you are a Christian today, believe in the Bible, and if you're a Christian, you have to believe in the Bible, you should, you have to, is that the Lord says, cast all of our cares on him because he cares for us. Uh, we have this peace and assurance that by his stripes we are healed. The stripes of Jesus when he was beaten on the cross with those stripes. Every stripe that was placed upon him. That's part of our healing. I'm going to talk a little about a healing. Um, not so much today the physical but emotional mental healing and moving forward and um, that's going to be one thing I'm going to talk about. I'm going to hit some things that are controversial and I really, really would like to just um, kind of like um, encourage some of you out there just to do some deeper thinking or pondering reflecting on a few things that I'm going to hit and say and then you can take it from there on your own and do what you like with it okay so I want to talk a little bit about the issue and the role of women and society and societies around the world now I know some out there feel that Women uh, are just not uh, cut out to be head leaders, uh, to lead in uh, capacities of, say, um, a government, um, politics. I don't know. Um, I think those are probably the, are the main ones. Uh, I guess uh, maybe you can't, some cannot see a woman who is going to lead. Of the police force and be the chief of, of police. They had one uh, who, who I believe she uh, tried to do her uh, very best uh, in the city of Seattle, though she is no longer there. But uh, throughout uh, uh, history, women have led in some powerful uh, positions. And I'm not for a woman being in a role of leadership because I need to have a representation of a woman on the world stage who is a head, a leader, or who uh, holds power and influence. Um, I'm not in need of that, but if it's if it exists, that's great. I'm going to go over a few. I'm going to. I'm not going to give a long list, but I'm going to uh, mention a few world leaders in a uh, time of history who were women. I want to begin, you may think you know where I'm going with this, but I, I, I bet you you don't. Um, what did I just say? Um, yeah, I kind of lost my thought. Oh, in God's Word, um, in the Old Testament, I have a highlighted and I do a focus on two female leaders. One is Esther who was used to prevent Jews from being annihilated. There was a plot to get rid of the Jews. This hasn't just started. This has been going on for a while. And then there's the prophetess uh, Deborah uh, in the book of Judges, who is who became the judge of Israel. Yes, God was using a woman to, to be on that place as the judge of Israel. And um, she also led the military, 
um, and she led men as well because God placed her there. This is not a role for everyone, all types of women. No, because a person is a woman or a man, <laughs> it's only two, and because uh, some feel like, as they said, this is a man's world, right? Um, but the song also says it wouldn't be anything without a woman. So nothing's going to happen. The world isn't going to go and spin around just with men on it. Women have contributed and play very important uh, roles uh, in the ongoing um, a design of humanity's existence because it's a woman that brings life into the world. So I know a whole lot of men say, yeah, that's what a woman is called to do. She gives birth. She carries and she gives birth. And that is a precious thing that we do. Um, but there are those that have an issue when a women are going to be a leading any high ranking sphere, high rank positions. But it has occurred in all throughout uh, history. Um, there's a pretty long list. There was a, a woman, a president in Argentina at some time. And yes, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that. I'm going to be a candidate and give my views on it. So for one, I'm, I'm for a women having roles in leadership. Um, if they are equipped and qualified, I know there's times um, that a women are called to a, a lead um, in education um, and corporations. So yes, do I feel a personally a comfortable with a myself being a leader at a church on my own? No, I don't. Um, I and for um, uh, the husband, the man being in the role of pastoral as the head, but I certainly am all for being his support alongside of him. I don't see how uh, a man of God who is in pastoral is going to be able to be as successful as he is called to be if he doesn't have a supportive spouse who is first a faithful to God and faithful to him. And so, uh, yeah, she does co-lead with her uh, husband. Because I look at it this way. If the wife doesn't do her role in supporting and, and coaching and co-leading with her spouse, there may be some other, say, women who like to take her place. And that should not be. Uh, no one should be uh, closer to the uh, pastor of, of, of a church than his own uh, wife in that role of leadership. So that's my position, okay? The man leads from the front and the, and the, the woman leads uh, from behind, but she is also a, con uh, a, contrib a contributor to the, uh, the leadership and the health and the growth of the church. That's how I uh, see it uh, for me uh, personally and I know um, some people say well that you know it's they're, they're uh, looking at it uh, biblically that a uh, women should not be the head a leader and, and and that's fine. I also do not desire to be a head leader but I cannot say that I don't uh, lead if my husband a lead because I lead right behind him with him being in front as the head. Uh, that's important. Uh, I, I I think when I when I see a man uh, as a pastor and he his wife is a little bit maybe not so much into his a uh, role in church or his position there and a little bit uh, too far back from what he is doing. Uh, that can cause discouragement, that can cause uh, the possibility of some other uh, women in the church thinking that they're going to uh, come alongside of the leader and support him and to fill in the gaps and the lack that the a wife 
doesn't seem uh, to do. So I believe it would be a, a pleasing in, in the eyes of God that a wife is bleeding right along beside her a husband and a Christian a gatherings and fellowship and church leadership. Okay, so that's where I am with women in that role. Now, um, as far as women uh, leading on the world stage, this is not new um, that uh, women have been uh, prime ministers and presidents. Uh, this is something that has been uh, going on for some time. I <laughs> remember how, uh, what, in memory, you know, how the Jews were expelled and, and the Moors under Queen Isabella, who came to power in Spain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, uh, the, boy, did she cause things to be uh, stirred up. Um, there's a much a respected Prime Minister, Golda Meir of Israel. Okay, and there was another Prime Minister of India, Indira Gandhi. Okay, so I just want to say we can go online and we can find a list until we fall asleep, maybe, <laughs> when you do other research about women who have led. I believe if women are qualified, they can lead on the world stage. And qualification is important. But for me as a woman, I do not hold to, I'm just going to be clear, that a woman should lead just because we need a woman to finally lead. Okay? Um, no, I don't uh, follow that. Any more than I, I, I follow, we need a man to lead just because, uh, I don't know, uh, based on identity, age, race, ethnicity, and gender, or socioeconomic status. Um, when we start to just feel that people who uh, uh, fulfill these particular categories, they should lead and and be uh, granted opportunities and roles no matter what. No, I am not on that uh, bandwagon. But I certainly do support those who I feel that are right and qualified for the positions across the board. Um, at times, if there has not been a history of minorities who are in these uh, positions of high rank and leadership, um, I believe those opportunities should be available. Uh, but even within the framework of minorities or women, it needs to be those who are fit and qualified, not just because they fit the particular a stereotype or the a color tag or the ethnicity tag or the race tag okay I told you I was gonna uh, be a little more on the uh, controversial side um, but I'm not gonna be going uh, back and forth uh, trying to debate or defend what I'm saying I'm gonna put it out there and that's gonna be it and you're gonna be uh, left with it to do whatever you want and you can discuss it further in, in your home and your relationships and your circles. So that's my point there. I have much respect for some of the uh, women who were prime uh, ministers such as Indira Gandhi, I, I always have, and Golda Meir. I have also respect for, I, I'm going to uh, put up a video of her and I think this is a very um, a professional um, experience and just an exceptional woman. And that is the president of Barbados. I will be putting up her information, so uh, something about her. Um, I got this information that in the small and the uh, island nation in the Caribbean, the Caribbean, the Caribbean, um, the country of Barbados. It is the only republic in the world where both the serving head of the state 
and head of government are women. And that's fine. I support that because they're doing the job. Uh, as far as far as I know, they they are um, in good standing on the world stage as world leaders, and they are respected. So some of you already are familiar with the president of, of Barbados, but I will put up a video. Um, and what I really like about uh, what I'm seeing and the leadership in Barbados is they have been able to move on and to heal and to heal from uh, the plight of colonization. And if you remember, I started this uh, video, I talked about uh, healing. And healing is so important because it's what gets us moving forward. And without it, we stay stuck in a place. You know, and, we, and, and we're getting older, and the world's getting older, and, and we are emotionally stuck in a place. So um, I have her making a speech um, over the death of the Queen about a year ago or so. More than that, maybe a little more than that. And uh, I have much respect for how she uh, handled that uh, situation and that, you know, um, a whole lot of the world was colonized by Britain. <laughs> a whole lot of the world. I mean, you, so, you know, people talk about, okay, so uh, the colonization uh, in, in uh, the United States of America, okay, with, uh, okay, a Great Britain being world colonizers, but hey, some people belong to even groups in Europe where uh, the Europeans were a colonize in Europe long before uh, the uh, UK, Great Britain, got to colonize in the Americas in the New World. So the colonization that has occurred under Great uh, Britain goes back far, 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 such as the people of the Republic of Ireland, before it even uh, gets into the United States of America, into the uh, southern states of the Republic. And not to mention that, but also in the uh, British Islands, the colonies uh, in the uh, Caribbean, okay? And that was also before it happened in the Republic, the United States of America. So I'm saying all that because her sophistication and confidence, it, it just, just override the past, the uh, terrible past, the uh, injustices. And now, you know, they, they, you know these are free island uh, nations. They have moved away and stepped away. And the same with uh, the Spanish colonies and the French colonies, you know. And so, that's what I actually admire about this a leader, is her positive nature, her a confidence as a leader. Not because she's a woman, you see, but because she's just called to be a good leader. Because we don't just need people to lead us because of the gender and the ethnicity and, 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 not, and not have, uh, not to be open to really unraveling are they the right ones for the job. You see, that's when I have a problem with that. You don't need just to have a man in front of a pulpit in a church as a pastor if he's not the right man for the job. Okay? And, yeah, just because he is a man doesn't mean he's the one that should always be in that place of leadership. Because if he's not right to lead, then he's just not right to lead. At the same time, even for me, the preference is to have 
a man of God who is the right one to lead. You see? But we can't just take, just have a someone to fill up a role in the world stage, a position to keep the seats warm, to keep the lights on, okay, if they're not the ones that are the best for the job, the position. And this is something to be really uh, thinking about. Yeah, you know, um, while things are changing in the United States, and I know there are some who are so opposed to uh, Kamala uh, Harris as uh, a woman running for office in the U.S. Some oppose her because she's a woman. Some will oppose maybe her background or how she looks, but some will just oppose her because they feel she is not the one that they want to choose to be the next president of the United States as a leader in that role. And everyone has their right to make their determination and their decisions. Right? Because if you don't have the right to make your own decision, then uh, I don't know, it sounds like we're living in a communist uh, regime. If people are being told who they should, who they have to want and pick. You can be inspired, you can be chaired, you can be coached, okay? But coaching isn't the same as coercion. Right. But that's kind of where it's coming to in the a U.S. and uh, I can say it's getting more and more uh, like high risk to even tell a people who you want to vote for and not to vote for. But see I'm not for promoting and pushing a people um, to fill up a role so uh, so we can have a certain type of representation. Representation is good when it's a strong a representation that gets the right job done but not just for the sake of a representation where is that going to get society or the people that they claim they're supposed to be supporting and representing it doesn't go too far so we truly need to have those who are fit for the job and leadership this is something to be thinking about in these upcoming uh, weeks and months uh, God knows what's going to uh, happen in the United States of America in the next six months. Because to be really honest with you, it looks like a nation that is um, unraveling at the seams more and more. Because here's what's going to hap have to uh, happen, but it begins, I say, with, the, with God's people, the body of Christ, the remnant. Is No one can really move on in a, a healthy and positive a fashion without some deep uh, healing um, of old uh, wounds. And I look at the U.S. as a land that it's it still uh, has it's has its it's fragile. It's still young. It's still new, and it's being pulled in this way in this direction. And a lot of the wounds are still, the, the open sores and the scars are still uh, worn um, in this nation, okay, on the hearts and the minds of many people. Uh, my n number one hope for the United States of America is Second Chronicles 7.14. I first, when I have to take a responsibility, um, not just because I'm a woman, but as one who is called by God in the body of Christ, that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. And I want to make that the prerequisite. That's the premise of seeing a changes in a land. Because where there's a the for, for forgiveness of sin, there's also the healing of old uh, wounds and and open scars and, and things like that. Open wounds and scars. Okay? 
and a warning to the U.S. Divide, divide within makes the nation more vulnerable for outside forces, for adversaries who are watching and looking in for the most opportunity to come in and do the takedown and the takeover. This is how the takedown and the takeovers have happened globally, historically, on every continent. Not just this continent, every continent. The problems within are stirring up and simmering in the pot and someone's watching. Okay, historically, the colonizers of the world, they also were aware of some of the tensions inside of the lands that they wished to take over. And you find the weakness, and you find the weakest spots, and you find the most torn areas in the fabric of the society, and then you launch the full takeover. And people's lives are jolted, um, exploited, da 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 da. Such is the, the history of the world, right? Of divide and conquer, take over and take downs. Let's see, you have the Mongols, you had the Huns, you had the Ottomans, you have the Romans. Uh, yeah, left out a few. Alexander Great. <laughs> okay. The Great Brits, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So how did, all, how did all that happen? That all happened too. Long before this republic was even in existence as a republic as it is, there was habitation here. But we all know how that story goes. The people who were the original people on the land, the indigenous people of the Americas, actually became the foreigners of the land. Had to be qualified now to hopefully try to get a citizenship to the, to the a territory that you've been on for a couple of thousand years. So you, so you, go, and you go and think about that one too. So that's my point. I wanted to put, I'm going to get this done like in 30 minutes. I wanted to open up a few, a can of worms. We don't need someone to fill a position just because you think that a person is the right representation. Because uh, we got to get a job done because there's a lot of outside of forces that's just waiting to take down the superpower. Okay? Um, and something else to think about. If you are a hundred years and under, you don't know what it's like to live in the United States and not be considered up there in the world as a superpower nation. Uh, you don't know any other kind of America, okay, except one that has had some type of superpower status. Imagine and sovereignty. Imagine all of that just taken down where you no longer have the rights and the freedoms that you and your grandparents, your great grandparents, and your great grandparents have lived. So that's something to think about because divide and conquer first they have to get you all divided and messed up within. And I can see it is, it is, it seems to be really surfacing and that pot is boiling over. And we're going to see how much that pot's going to boil over uh, as we are approaching these uh, changes in uh, the leadership in the United States of America. And let me say, say this right here. This video is not about telling you who to vote for or who not to vote for. What I'm saying is that to think carefully why you feel you should vote for a particular uh, person. It has to be more than just their identity and background and history and how a person looks okay but uh, are they qualified for the job so that's what I'm telling you because do I really have a right to say uh, 
or coerce and, and you know we're not called to bully people on who to vote for are we <laughs> then why bother okay it is a private matter that's the way it's really supposed to be that's how it was started out but you can see that's also a changing too okay I've lived in a country where you can get hurt too depending on who you vote for are we coming to that okay so these are some things to uh, think about and again for me personally it's the person that's the best for the job right uh, if it happens to be a woman so be it but if it's not then it's not it's not because they are a woman and I, and I would like to say this um, as well and then while I'm on the topic of women for all a lot of people that are now saying the importance of having the first woman a president and how important it is to be you know to um, that a woman get an opportunity in women of color but I want to say this lately in the last couple of years it seemed that the, this uh, a lot of the popular trend of opinion was uh, uh, the society was trying to define who's a woman I mean when you're asking a woman what's a woman you hardly got any a response so I'm just trying to make a little sense out of this so about uh, two years ago or so it seemed to be such a complexity to define who's a woman and what it means to be a woman you ask a woman who's a woman you're asking a woman who's a woman and they're looking at you um well you know I mean yeah what happened to the suffrage of movement of women's rights I took that course in school I was all for that okay um, what uh, happened to uh, what it means to be really a woman and of uh, the fact that women have not been always allowed opportunities to uh, to be their best and to say lead others um, yes I believe in being a girl all the time 24-7 at the same time, I also know that God has given me capabilities to help others, to instruct others, to do what I'm doing now, and at times to lead, because women have led in God's Word. But see, the, the, the thing I, I have an issue with, you know, um, with hypocrisy and making and just changing and flipping things up for convenience. If, you, if, if, a society, if a society doesn't even know how to define who's a woman in 2024, in the 21st century, and now we're hearing people say the importance of pushing the rights for women and giving women uh, the opportunity that they need, then I think you're going to have to uh, clarify uh, something here. I know what a woman is. I am one. <laughs> okay? I don't have any questions to ask about that. But the thing is that those who are in these positions of any type of influence or say in the political arena you know it was like it was like one of the hardest uh, questions uh, to ask was who's a woman what does it mean to be a woman okay so let's get some things cleared up here okay because it looks like you pull you, you some are pulling society this way and that way and so many different directions to the people in the United States who pay taxes off of their hard-earned dollars okay we need to know more of what's the intent okay you have we all have a right to at least put it out there what is it okay and as for the fact that a woman can lead yes I believe 
a woman can, they have in the past. But for me, it's not just any woman. It needs to be a person who has proven that they are qualified for the job. And for a whole lot of people in the cities in the United States right now, there are still unanswered uh, questions. I mean, what, ha what has uh, happened to uh, the situation at the border? Yeah. Okay? And I'm for legal immigration, and uh, I, have, I have also a history, as so many, that um, my ancestors, they somehow made it to the shores of the United States of America. Okay, and I'm here. And so are a lot of you. But they came about through a system, right? that wasn't as, as maybe chaotic as what we have seen the last couple of years. So in making your decisions, United States of America, on who should lead is that you have to really look at the situations for what they are and not just uh, have all of the hype about, well, we need this kind of person or that kind of person because we have adversaries, people that are looking outside, who are outside of the uh, uh, U.S. observing and looking in. And um, you got to understand that there's a, a lot of men on the world stage uh, uh, right now and in the uh, geopolitical um, um, a situation is that the East is trying to rise. As the West is, as as the West is uh, kind of declining, and so someone needs to be able to deal with these affairs internationally to be able to stand up to some of the powers that be in the geopolitical international relations areas here, where the U.S. Uh, you know, you have uh, someone wants to start another war here and a another war here, and so uh, you, you got to have someone who has the competency, the understanding, um, and the diplomacy to handle these very difficult situations that are before us as a society, because no sovereign nation is truly an entity all of its own. It's always the potential for a power grab to divide and conquer, take down and take over. And none of us alive today, a hundred and under, want to even imagine what that's going to be like. Because those who look from the outside who look in do not see all of the different divisions that we are seeing within ourselves. You see, because if the U.S. goes down, if you're on the soil, you're going to go down with it. That's right. That's how it goes. They see the red, white, and blue flag. That's representing anyone. Even if you're an illegal resident, or on your way to be a legal resident. When you're on the soil of a nation, you go down with it. You're part of it. So, now, <laughs> you can take all of that stuff I said. This was going to be one of those uh, videos. It's not one for feedback. It's one for reflecting, for reflection, for pondering. And you can discuss it amongst whoever you wish. Or you can just pass on by. But I need to say those things. I thought I was led to. And I'm going to uh, put up um, an amazing a woman who uh, leads the country of Barbados. Okay? So those are my thoughts. You can like and subscribe. Until next time, Shalom.